I'm Dr. Emily Valchettis. I'm an assistant professor of psychology at New York University. People who graduate with a PhD in psychology have a number of different career options available to them. Probably the one that comes to mind most readily, given what I do, uh, is that people with a PhD can become a university professor. But there's a number of different types of professor positions that are available. Some ask uh, a professor to engage in a lot of research working with graduate students, working with undergraduates, master's students, uh, doing, doing research every day, training students to do the research and conducting the experiments themselves for the purpose of publishing original work. Of course, that's not the only thing that one does in that position. There's also teaching responsibilities. Uh, those kinds of professors would be teaching courses on research, teaching courses about the research, evaluating the quality of the work that's done, and, um, and sort of participating in disseminating work, uh, research in that way. Other types of positions within the university would include instructor positions. You might focus solely on teaching statistics, for instance, or research methods. Um, those, those kinds of instructor positions would require a PhD, but have you working in the classroom uh, teaching students on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and other kinds of professor positions might have you working with undergraduates at liberal arts colleges uh, that don't perhaps have the strong research component, the requirement that you publish your own original research. Instead, you are working uh, with undergraduates, perhaps helping them with their research, teaching them in classes, small seminars or large lecture classes. Um, that's another form of, another type of responsibility that you would have as an instructor or as a professor uh, with a PhD in psychology. And those are the routes or those are the options available to keep you sort of uh, in, in the university atmosphere. But of course, with a PhD in psychology, you can be doing things well outside of, of that realm. I know that people with PhDs in psychology are going to work for uh, firms like Google or Facebook where the training in behavioral statistics or critically evaluating and applying research comes in quite handy. So a lot of students, given that the PhD requires you to really have a good understanding of how to work with data, how to do math, how to analyze the data that's coming in. Uh, a lot of companies see great value in that, and so you can be helping Facebook, for example, decide what sort of advertising campaign might be most effective. Another job that is available perhaps is within um, the business world doing consulting work, rolling out new, uh, new programs through human resources departments, if a new program is being implemented within a large company interfacing with the human resources department and the employees to try to figure out how to, how to best uh, implement a new plan, what strategy is going to be effective for training employees on, on a new system, for instance. So there's a lot to be done within consulting, using psychology to help improve better business practices. So each program uh, at a university that, that might offer a PhD in psychology is going to be different in the courses that are required, but there are a few common core elements. For instance, all the PhD programs that I'm aware of will have a strong statistics component. You have to be able to take the data, analyze the data, and make sense of what it is that you've gotten. So there will be statistics courses uh, within the PhD program. There's also going to be research methods courses that'll train you in how to design experiments, how to do case studies, how to do archival research perhaps, depending on the content, uh, the research content you're interested in. There'll be several classes that help you develop your skills, both in statistics and in research methods. Those are the two core types of coursework, courses that you'll find within PhD programs. But beyond that, then there's a, quite a large variety in what would be required of you. 
Some programs will have you take a number of different types of content courses, seminars where you're really delving into a particular topic within psychology. For example, you might be required to take courses in industrial organizational psychology where we talk about uh, how psychological principles are implemented within business, within the marketplace, within industry. You might be required to take courses also in cognitive psychology and social psychology and uh, perceptual psychology and computational neuroscience. You might be asked to delve into these topics across a variety of areas of psychology uh, and in fact push you to, to engage in this content that's well outside perhaps of your main core interest so that you get a breadth of perspectives and a, a wealth of knowledge in your background. In addition to the courses though, um, there's a lot in PhD programs, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one work that you do with your advisor. You'll primarily be asked in PhD programs to come up with your own original line of research, asking a novel question that perhaps hasn't been asked by anybody before, figuring out how to best tackle that question, collecting the data, analyzing the data, and pitching the story to the, more, to the more broad community outside of your own department. And so in order to accomplish that goal of producing this original research, you do a lot of work with your advisor, with your mentor, one-on-one -on -one independent study uh, uh, practice and training and, and meetings one-on-one -on -one with your advisor. So in addition to the coursework, that's another big component of the PhD program is the produ production of original research that you are an independent researcher on, that you are the primary investigator on, but of course you do that in consultation and with the support of your advisor. So what this research culminates in then will be a dissertation. A dissertation is a document that you write that describes an original line of research that you conducted on which you were the primary investigator. It's like a journal article, except it's usually a bigger undertaking than a journal article. And it's a way for you to become an expert in a particular line of research, in a particular topic. You do a lot of reading of what is already out there in the existing literature. You synthesize it, you become an expert in that area of research, and then you tell us, the reader, of your dissertation, of your document, where the holes are. What are the questions that are left to still be investigated? What isn't known in light of what is already known? Then you also describe what studies you're going to do to try to address this hole in the literature. You describe the research that you conducted and present the results and again synthesize it with respect to what's already out there. A lot of people's dissertations end up becoming published manuscripts, although that's not a necessary requirement in, in most PhD programs. So you can get a sense of what a dissertation will be like by reading, by reading articles that are more lengthy in some of the journals that you'll be aware of. A dissertation could be, could be for some programs, one very large study, a case study, uh, or it might be several experiments that really delve into a particular topic and really try to understand the mechanism of what's responsible for producing some sort of effect that you're interested in. So how much work, how many studies, how many participants, how much data is required is really to be determined by you, your advisor, and the program that you're in. But really at the core is that it's an opportunity for you to become an expert in one area of work, to dive into it, to know what's out there inside and out, and then to have the opportunity to contribute to this literature in a novel and unique way. Graduate study is a big commitment, so if I had one piece of advice, I would say make sure you know that you want to do this before you jump into it. It takes a lot of time, there's a lot of setbacks along the way, everybody has their ups and their downs, some days might be great, your studies are working, your data is turning out wonderfully, you get a manuscript accepted for publication, a reporter calls you because they're interested in what it is that you just found out, those are great days. But not every day is like that. Some days it's a slog. The study that you just spent six months to run didn't work out. You're not really sure why. Participants aren't coming in to participate because their own time schedules are completely filled up with classes that they're taking, so the studies are moving slowly. Some days can be hard to get through. 
But in order to persevere above these obstacles and these setbacks, you gotta know that you're in it because you love it. Intrinsic motivation is compelling. You're not gonna, you're not gonna succeed unless you know that you're doing what you love. That helps you overcome these obstacles. So how do you find out whether this is the right thing for you? If there's other things like being a musician, being an artist, being a cognitive psychologist, being a social psychologist, if those are things you think you might be interested in, give them a shot before you jump into a graduate career in any one particular area. You can get these kinds of experiences through summer internships, uh, by working in somebody's lab for a year to see if you like that area of research. Um, and you can give other careers an opportunity to unfold before you jump into a PhD program. Not everybody, in fact, I might say most people don't go straight through from high school, when high school graduate, when you graduate, then go to an undergrad degree and then straight on to a master, then a PhD program. I bet you a lot of people who do well and who succeed, at least in my experience, are ones that have taken some time to decide whether this is the right thing for them. They've taken two years to work for AmeriCorps, they've taken a year to uh, teach, teach for America in inner city schools, they've taken a year to do grant writing for a cancer uh, research institution before jumping into a PhD in social psychology. They know when they've jumped into their program that this is what they want to be doing. And if you can know for sure, if you can give yourself the other opportunities to try out other career options, then you're jumping into a PhD program certain that this is for you. And ultimately that helps overcome the obstacles and the stumbles that inevitably come your way. So if I had advice on what you can do to better prepare yourself for graduate study, for a PhD program, I'd say experience. Experience, experience, experience. Of course, getting good grades matters. Of course, doing well in the GRE matters. So you gotta, you have to take the, the daily study seriously. You have to take the test seriously. But above and beyond that, it's really demonstrating to others and demonstrating to yourself that you have a taste for what this is all about, for what research is all about. So volunteer early, volunteer often. Go up to professors whose classes you've done well in and that you enjoy and ask if there's more opportunities. Ask if they're doing research that you can get involved in. Volunteer your time so that you can join a lab, make a personal relationship with a faculty member or with other graduate students who are in a position you would like to be in one day and give it a shot. Ask to pitch in, ask for experience, ask to be an assistant. And, and ask to move around on different projects. Each project that you do, you might, you might learn something. Odds are you will learn something. You'll learn that you like this line of research, and just as importantly, you might find out that you don't like a line of research, or you don't like this whole topic area, or you don't like this, this area, or this discipline within psychology. Finding out what you like is just as important as finding out what you don't like. And all of that comes from experience, from giving it a shot, from trying out research, from volunteering your time. You'll not only be helping the scientific discipline, but you'll be helping yourself understand who you are and what you want for your own career. Some of the students that I've seen that have been most successful are ones that come to me mostly with earnestness and with eagerness. They may not have the background, they may not have the training, they might not have the experience yet, but they have enthusiasm. They have enthusiasm for developing a sense of who they are. Some of the best students that I've worked with have, have come to me with no experience as freshmen or as sophomores and said like, I don't really know what it is about psychology that I like. I just want to give it a shot. Can I just pitch in? Can I just help out in any way? And those students learn a lot. They like some projects, they don't like others, but they started early. It gives them a chance then to, um, to go down different routes, to go down different paths and find what it is that they're interested in. Some students that I've worked with that have gone on to graduate schools at the top universities like Columbia University or MIT, um, or students that have found programs that they, that they really love that are specialized, that have a specialized program for their interests, are ones that started out with me in their freshman or sophomore year and just tried on a lot of different hats. They had the time, starting early, um, to gain experience, to learn what they like and learn what they don't like. Myself, I got my first research experience when I was a freshman in undergrad. 
somebody, a professor, came into a class that I was in and said, hey, if you wanna, if you wanna get out of writing the final paper and instead spend the semester doing research, uh, join me. So I did that day. I went to him and said, yeah, I want to get out of writing that final paper. I want to get some research experience. So within the first week of my freshman year of undergrad, I threw myself into research again, having no experience, having no skills, but having an earnestness and an eagerness to get some research experience and maybe get out and getting out of writing a paper. Uh, but that was really helpful. I found out that I didn't like the study of group processes that I didn't like the study of babies, although cute, they're very difficult to collect data from, and I found out that I do like the study of motivation. So I'm glad that I got that experience starting in my freshman year, because again, it gave me time to figure out what it is that I like and what I don't like.